Welcome to the Same Day Podcast, where we discuss driving incremental business growth and other topics related to real estate, property management, and entrepreneurship. Now, to the show at hand. Yoni Schmidt here, hosting today's episode of the Same Day Podcast, where we connect with top business leaders and entrepreneurs, uh, real estate experts in the industry. Today's episode is brought to you by Q-Entro Property Management. At Q-Entro Property Management, we are a full-service property management company helping our clients buy, renovate, and operate real estate assets. We help our clients build wealth while taking the headache of property management. And today, we have Noah Bleicher. I'm thrilled to introduce you to our esteemed guest, a dynamic leader and the director of operations at Capital Homes, a company renowned for delivering high-quality homes and exceptional customer service. With an impressive tenure that spans nearly four years at Capital Homes, Noah is the driving force behind operational efficiency and the successful outcomes uh, of the company's key initiatives. His journey in entrepreneurship and leadership doesn't stop there. Noah was also the owner and founder of Vietnam Nam, showcasing his versatile business acumen and passion for diverse ventures. Before this, he led as president and owner of Su Casa Colombia, where he transformed a bed and breakfast into a top-ranking lodging destination, demonstrating his remarkable ability to create and nurture successful businesses. With a rich history of leadership roles and a deep understanding of efficient business processes, Noah is here to share his uh, insight and experiences in the home building industry, entrepreneurship, and much more. We're honored to have such an accomplished and insightful individual with us today. Please join me in welcoming Noah Bleifert to the podcast. Noah, how are you today? Doing great, Yona. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for joining us. So, Noah, can you share a little bit about the story, how you ended up in Tulsa as the Director of Operations for Capital Homes, and what is it that drives the mission of providing high-quality homes um, at Capital Homes, of course? Sure, sure. So, um, my uh, path to Tulsa um, was a little bit circuitous, but uh, as you mentioned, I was uh, previously owner, founder um, of a food service company called Vietnam Nam up in Chicago area. Um, my wife and I had been living uh, in South America, and then we went to Chicago so I could attend grad school at Northwestern, um, and then this business came out of it. Um, and so ran that company for a number of years, ended up selling out to my business partner, and then was looking to get into uh, real estate. Um, and so in, in my wide net search uh, a, a, a great little town called Tulsa came upon my, upon my radar, and I was fortunate to um, connect with uh, the folks over at Capital Homes. Um, and as you know, one thing led to another with good conversation and, and a good opportunity presented itself. Um, it really sort of all fell into, into place for me to join. So with my um, uh, entrepreneurship and operations, uh, hands-on operations background, um, I was able to step into this role and, and really uh, fill in a need uh, that the company had. Uh, to sort of add some extra firepower, some extra um, extra operational uh, expertise to the to the company. Um, and I'm I'm originally from Dallas, so part of coming from Chicago down to Tulsa was a bit of a move closer to home. Um, and so my wife and two kids have really enjoyed being close to grandparents and uh, just enjoying uh, that proximity a bit more. So that was sort of the, the long long way we got to Tulsa. Um, and joining Capital Homes uh, was really uh, a great opportunity for me to bring that previous uh, expertise and experience in in hospitality, uh, in in customer service, and really take it into the new home construction industry, uh, and realize that uh, in a lot of ways, you know, even though we our, our product is homes, um, a lot of what we do is customer service. Uh, we are we're fortunate to be able to uh, provide you know one of the biggest, if not the biggest investment uh, uh, in, in, a, in a family's uh, life uh, to them in a really high quality, uh, thorough way. And, and a lot of what I do is just make sure that that process is as smooth and as uh, stress-free as possible. Um, so obviously, I work with a number of great folks on our team from our, uh, our, our marketing team, our sales organization, our construction, our warranty, um, all of our back office team. I, I get to play a little bit of air traffic control um, and, and have hands on, on different steering wheels across the company. Um, and it's been a lot of fun for me to, to, to make sure that everything is 
working really well and and that uh sort of the 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 machine is well well oiled and efficient um so it's a lot i of love that <clears throat> yeah love that so um how exactly did you get connected with capital homes um before you moved to tulsa well so so uh i uh have a, a good buddy who lives here in Tulsa. He'd been talking about um, all the great things that were happening in the city uh, for a number of years. Um, and just because of the timing of, of when I exited from Vietnam Nam and happened to be in the market for a new new job, new new uh, new career even, um, you know, he kept reminding us and we, we ended up taking a trip down here uh, to, to visit. So um, we came here for a weekend, met a bunch of great folks, uh, you know, uh, through through a friend of ours and just through another, you know, sort of the, the network that we had, uh, we're able to be introduced to the to the leadership team at Capital Homes and um, just with good conversation and uh, a lot of exploration about about the company and about my background, um, we were able to to work something out for me to join. And so I was fortunate that someone who didn't have uh, new home construction experience um, was still appealing to them uh, for me to join the team. But again, I think it was. Uh, their faith that uh, someone who has started and operated two businesses um, and had that hospitality and sort of people focused uh, mentality uh, could take those lessons and apply them here to a new industry. Um, yeah. So that that was I was fortunate they took a chance on me, and I think they're I think they're thankful and grateful that that I joined the team too. We we did weather a pandemic in the middle of that of my first couple of years there, so that was yeah hopefully helpful to have me there. That's true. I know that um, they're they're you know lucky to have you. That friend, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, is Michael Bosch that you mentioned, who yeah. is a former mm -hmm. guest here uh, at the on the same day uh, podcast. Uh, Matt Zelk interviewed him. I think one of the very first episodes of the podcast. Um, and so you mentioned the home building process and the home buying process. This is something that individuals, um, you know, for for many individuals out there, this is the biggest investment uh, in their life. And I'm familiar with the home buying process with Capital Homes because I was fortunate enough to uh, have gone through that process. And I'm actually sitting in my home right now here in Emerson Heights, a home that you were that. involved in building, a home mm -hmm. that I absolutely love. And so I guess my question here is uh, Capital Home emphasizes you know, customer satisfaction. And you mentioned hospitality from your previous um, businesses that you've, uh, that you, successful businesses that you've launched and operated. Um, but can you tell me, you know, Capital Home emphasizes customer satisfaction throughout the home building process. Could you share an example where this focus significantly impacted a home buyer's experience? Um, I know I can, but I, I'm sure that you have many stories that, uh, you know, would resonate with our listeners. Sure, sure. Well, so yeah, I mean, as, as you mentioned, Yoni, uh, one of our big focuses is uh, customer experience, you know, CX. That's that's a, that's the buzzword these days. But um, but we really do take that to heart, and we feel that you know one of our um, differentiators, something that makes us uh, different, uh, hopefully better than, than some of our competitors, is that we we really do try to go the extra mile. We try to do the unexpected. Um, we try to surprise and delight in a way that um, folks might not expect from a from a home builder. You know, we're we're at the end of the day, we're in the construction industry. There's certain uh, presumptions about what that means, and and the home building process. A lot of folks just don't have familiarity with it. Um, so first and foremost, one thing we really try to do is provide a good education uh, that starts, you know, online at our website, sort of the home building process. Uh, we try to make ourselves very available. Um, you know, we have a, a great uh, team member named Cynthia who's available, you know, almost 24/7 for a phone call, for texting, for emailing. Just to answer questions and sort of start that process of of exploring the possibility of, of a new home uh, build or or buying a, a home that's almost complete, um, and so that sort of starts there. But it sort of goes throughout our entire process of uh, you know we we sort of train our team. We talk uh, uh, relentlessly about uh, putting yourselves in other folks' shoes. You know, uh, sort of imagining. Um, how someone who's never done uh, a new home build uh, might be feeling and the questions they might have. And we try to anticipate those uh, those needs, those questions, those experiences so that we can uh, be there when when they need us and even ahead of time. Um, and, and one of the biggest things that we helped implement in the last several years uh, in support of this effort um, is is almost a constant feedback loop. So we have uh, you know scheduled phone calls, for example, uh, with our sales and our superintendent 
uh, sit and side by side call on each of our buyers on a weekly basis to check in and see how things are going just to provide updates. Hey, hey, we installed your countertop this past week. Hey, your drywall went up. You know, what questions do you have? How can I be helpful? Wow. Those sort yeah. of frequent touch points allow for us to you know, not only show them that we care, but also be available for any feedback or any questions that they have. Um, it really does try to be a frequent touch point so that we can not only be a support, but also should something you know, go sideways uh, or have a question that or a concern, you know, we are there and, and not some, um, you know, distant, distant uh, office or phone call away um, for folks. So that's some of the examples of it. But um, we really do try to distinguish ourselves. Uh, one, one thing I always talk about is, uh, you know, communication is free. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to send an email, doesn't cost you anything to make a phone call. Um, that's something that is uh, easy for our team to do is just be proactive and, and available. Um, and then obviously we always encourage our, our, our home buyers to, to feel free to give us a call and, and just talk through anything. Um, and that, and that filters all the way down, uh, to our warranty team, you know, sort of from the start up at the marketing side, all the way to the back end of our, of our, um, customer care and warranty department. Um, we just try to be as available as possible so that we can be there when, when our customers need us. Yeah. And I've experienced that. I've spoken to Cynthia, uh, multiple times, uh, when I was buying this house here in Emerson, in Emerson Heights. I was mostly dealing with um, Wayne Roos, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's also, of course, Sally Mosby, which I uh, see her putting listings uh, up on uh, Zillow and MLS all over the area here. And I just love what you guys are doing in the neighborhood, really um, transforming this area, making it just like a really great area to live in, a really great neighborhood to live in right outside of downtown Tulsa. Love walking downtown um takes me about 10 minutes from my house so um well that's uh, great as, and i i would love love to hear that you're that you're enjoying it too i mean that, that's really that's why we do it so love to hear that yoni yeah and uh, i will say that the communication piece is so true um you know when people are making the biggest investment of their lives it's so important to be open transparent and available for them to ask those questions uh, i have a friend who reached out to me on i think it was christmas day and she wanted to go see a capital homes house in broken arrow and you know just the the level of communication i texted sally within an hour or so i got a response connecting me back again with cynthia um to schedule an appointment to go see the property and i think the very next day we got uh my friend into the house to take a look at it so um that is awesome um so Tell me a little bit about some unique challenges that you've faced in the home building industry or your journey and how have you overcome them? I know that you've implemented some new systems at Capital Homes. One of them, uh, I believe, is HubSpot. You've spoken to Robert Davis, our um, chief operating officer at Kirinter PMC, and um, you know, taken some, some of the stuff that uh, maybe we were doing in HubSpot and implemented it into uh, the capital home business model or uh, just general operation. Mm -hmm. What challenges have you faced and how did you overcome them? Through use of sure. technology, through your past experiences and lessons, um, and what tools or people were you able to access and leverage? Sure, sure. Well, so you know, when when I joined Capital Homes in in uh, March on March second, twenty twenty, you know, the 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 company was always a, already a mature company. You know, been in business since nineteen eighty seven. So, um, you know, th there was no need to reinvent any wheels, but there was a lot of opportunity, you know, for tweaks and improvements in you know in in, in small or or medium or big spots there too. And so, as you point out, you know, one of the things that I observed when I joined the team, you know, was that our our CRM software was was okay. It was functional, but it wasn't quite as all encompassing as we might hope. And you know, we sort of we spent a lot of time uh, uh, throughout the year strategizing and dreaming up different ways that our company can be improved. And um, one of the visions we had when we uh, researched and ultimately decided on HubSpot was a end-to-end, -end, you know, single source of truth uh, database for our customer experience. And again, it sort of goes back to that: we want to know information about the folks that we're, we're working with so that we can then provide that level of support that we expect of ourselves um, and that hopefully our customers are expecting of us. And so HubSpot, you know, was sort of was the was the winner after a long research process uh, to decide what type of CRM was going to be able to 
uh, meet those needs. Um, and it's not just about, you know, storing, uh, you know, the phone number and the email and, you know, the, the, the meetings. It's really, um, as you know, I'm sure from, from your experience with HubSpot, it allows for so much um, automation and sort of setting up of sequences. So there's marketing implications, there's obviously sales implications, and there's back end, you know, customer care warranty implications too. So um, HubSpot was, was one of my early projects after joining the team. Um, and we got that up and running within a few months. Um, and that's been great. That's, that's been off and running. Um, you mentioned, you know, sort of the software focus uh, and other technology applications that we've that we've implemented. That's a big part of where we see, you know, the world going. And, and obviously, as our um, as our target demographic, uh, you know, we've we got a wide demographic. But but as uh, new uh, generations of home buyers come into the market, um, you know, we recognize that the the younger they are, they are in the in the in the market for purchasing a home. Um, the more technologically savvy they probably are. Um, and so we want to be right there and ahead of the game uh, compared to our competitors with with the, the tapping into what's available um, in a smart and strategic way. Um, so another, you know, I mentioned earlier, sort of the, the constant feedback um, that we hope for, we did set up a, a great service uh, through Avid Ratings. It's a, it's a sort of a feedback and survey software that we implemented. It also integrates with HubSpot. So we're able to sort of tie those together. Um, but that's a way that basically at a certain um, moment in their construction journey, they get an automatic email or a text to their phone and said, hey, how do we do on this? Hey, we know you just walked mm -hmm. out of your design appointment 20 minutes ago. Can you tell us how it was? Those sort of things allow us to get that constant feedback that then we know, hey, we did a good job or, hey, there was an opportunity for improvement here. Let's jump on that and, and make sure the customer knows that we heard them and that we want to make sure that, that, that their expectations were met. Or if there's things for us to tweak, you know, we want to know that too, of course. Um, so that was another good one. And then actually one of the ones that I'm, I'm most excited about was something that we implemented just about uh, a year ago. Um, yeah, uh, early 23, um, which is a uh, drafting and estimating software called HiArc. Um, so they are a relatively new company, been in business about five or six years based out of uh, Northern California. Um, but they are trying to be, you know, the 21st century version of AutoCAD. Uh, which is the the sort of the the, the home uh, it, it can be used for a lot of architectural applications, but the design and the drafting that goes into how we uh, put forth new plans and elevations. Um, we had historically been using AutoCAD. Uh, we still use it a little bit, uh, but we've moved majority of our work into this HiArc software uh, because of that sort of forward thinking applicability to where we want to be. Um, so just to give you a few highlights of what we love about it. Um, it is a uh, basically you sort of build this this this, um, this database of the the Lego pieces of your home and say you know here's my here's my uh, uh, windows here's my uh, siding here's my roof structure um, and then you can sort of pull it off the shelf and create homes in 2D and in even 3D um, right there in a much faster more efficient way with a lot of economies of scale and so our product development from idea to actual field ready uh, construction drawings has shrunk tremendously. We used to have that in a five to six month process sometimes, and now we're down to one to two months. So wow. tremendous efficiencies in sort of how we take a new concept and sort of put it out there into the market. And that has been, it's been a journey because it's been, you know, our, our draftsman tells me it's like having to learn to write with left, his left hand. Uh, you know, like he didn't, he didn't have, he didn't have the skill. So he had to really learn it. Um, but now that we've gotten over the learning curve, uh, it's really proven its worth and, and, uh, we've been loving using it. And then I would, I would say our, our in the field construction team loves it because, um, in the previous world, we had, uh, you know, a set of blueprints and, uh, in our, in our industry, there's, um, you know, we, we, we call them sort of option bubbles that you sort of circle if our customers have selected this upgraded bathroom or upgraded primary suite. Um, and now because there is just one set of drawings, if they select that upstream uh, at their design appointment or with the salesperson, um, it is on the prints as it should be right there in the room. There's no separate bubbles and things for our subcontractors to follow. Um, it's just you, 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 what you see is what you get. Um, and that has really uh, clarified things and made things really easy uh, for our, our superintendents and our, and our subcontractors to, to build. And it has reduced errors, reduce extra expenses. I mean, it really has created a bunch of efficiencies for us. So um, that's our most recent software integration uh, in the last year. And it really has paid dividends for us. Yeah. 
Wow, wonderful. Um, and so when you you said you set up HubSpot, you were setting up workflows, I'm guessing, and automations and pipelines and you know all of the triggers, I guess, that would uh, follow. Can you tell us a little bit about you know what that looks like in terms of the home building and home buying process? I know that Capital Homes has a very unique eight step home buying process that's really simple to follow. Uh, if you're a buyer out there looking to purchase a home, uh, how does that translate into your software, right? The, the, from the moment the buyer comes into your CRM, top of funnel, and going through the entire home building process, how do those eight steps uh, sink into your technology and the usage of that technology? Because that sure. must be very complex. Right. Well, it, it took it took a long time to get everything set up the way that we were happy with it, and and also sort of making this, the software is uh, intuitive and and uh, have a great support team from HubSpot. Um, but that said, you know we've got sort of a particular way that we would like to do it. So there was there was some massaging in there. Um, but you know, essentially, uh, because of the underlying software support that allows um, the workflow to flow between different departments from different employees. Um, you know, so for example, you mentioned Cynthia, she's fantastic. So she'll, she'll take an inbound phone call, let's say, um, and take, uh, ask good questions, get some more information from this prospective buyer. Um, and from there, all through HubSpot, you can set up an appointment, you know, without even picking up the phone to call our salesperson. They can see the schedule. It's all in one place. You make an appointment. And then, of course, the automation kicks in because then now that's on that salesperson's calendar, they get an alert. They're sort of, there's a, there's a, um, there is a, Technology based, but also a, a warm handoff uh, between mm -hmm. our different team members, um, so that there's not uh, again we're sort of just reducing the friction between um, the different individuals and different departments. And that same principle translates as it goes further down the funnel, down the down the construction journey. So the salesperson obviously will handle that um, that prospective buyer when they come through the model home door, or even ahead of time, you know, by text or phone or or however, and then. Uh, with good thorough notes and information be put in there, more uh, workflows trigger from that too. So um, if they, you know, if we're fortunate enough and they decide that they want to build with us and they sign a contract uh, on, a, on a lot in a home, um, then the next stage in the process will be to go to our design center and meet with Amy Hosher, um, who does our, all of our selections. And so Amy, again, is set up automatically with uh, all the relevant information for this uh, this home buyer. So you know, obviously the lot and block and the home they're going to build, but generally, you know, what sort of styles, what sort of features, what information are they looking for? And so um, obviously it's dependent on our team having good uh, understanding and training of sort of what the, how the software works and also what their, uh, we call them internal customers, what your next person in line is going to mm -hmm. hope to get from you. Um, and so if they're doing uh, what they need to do, then Amy is set up for success uh, by getting all this information automatically dropped into her inbox. Um, so that she is informed before that person walks through the door how a bit more about how that experience is going to go. And, and the same thing applies to the next step in the line, which would be the construction process. Our construction team will also get information sent over to them. And so they've got information uh, coming from the system. And then, uh, you know, then throughout the home uh, homeowner's journey, the, the, the construction journey, um, you know, I mentioned the AVID surveys. Those are one step that's sort of automated throughout that. Um, there's more. Uh, sort of uh, stages of the journey that trigger additional things within our system. So, you know, a lot of it is just sort of check-ins and making sure that we're doing well. Um, but then it's also sort of milestones in the in the home uh, in the home building journey as well uh, that then will allow uh, the homeowner to feel informed and also have all the information within our team uh, ready to go so we can jump in and, and support as needed. Um, and again, that will then flow once the home build is complete to our uh, to our closing department. They get a lot of updates and information coming out of HubSpot and, and, and from the salesperson as well. And then once the once the page turns and the home has closed and they are now in the in the customer care and warranty department's hands, um, same thing. They sort of get this this um, this this uh, flood of information um, from all of the events, all the interactions upstream. So they've got a good backstory um, for this person's experience with us. And mm -hmm. you know, we can flag we can flag if they say, hey, this person had a ton of questions about uh their root or their guttering you know and so let's just make sure that we touch on that a bit more so really these are just ways that we can provide that tailored level of care that we hope to 
um, but also just again be that support that we that we promise uh, for our home buyers so that they always know that we're here for them and uh, and that we have the technology to help us uh, keep keep all of our ducks in a row and keep keep on top of these different uh, factors. Yeah, love that. There are so many moving parts when you're building a home. So going, I guess, from you know discovery to design to construction to closing to post closing and uh, home warranty, and then of course throughout every step of these uh, of the process, you're you're soliciting feedback from the client to, um, of course, make sure that you are providing them with that level of service that you want to the high level of service and the high quality service. Um, you know, that your clients, of course, um, deserve, but also learning from that so that you can iterate and continue to improve in the future and uh, provide, you know, even higher quality standard, higher quality service to your um, clients. Um, is, is that kind of how I'm understanding that? That's, that's exactly right. I mean, we, we, we talk a lot about the fact that any one home uh, probably has, you know, 200 different hands touch that house, right? So from our wow. superintendents to our subcontractors, and if you want to sort of talk figuratively, all the back office folks or closing partners that we have at our title companies and lenders, I mean, there are just so many folks that have interaction with just one home. And so, mm -hmm. you know, given that there are hundreds of hands or people uh, touching, you know, one person's journey, um, you know, we, we're we honest with ourselves, we're all human, you know, mistakes are going to happen. and and um, and that that part's okay. That that's sort of that's that's life. Um, but it's how you respond to them and it's how you react mm -hmm. um, that I think can distinguish you in, in your customers' eyes. And so um, that's why we care so much about that feedback. That's why we care so much about being in touch frequently, um, so that mm -hmm. so that folks have the opportunity to feel comfortable telling us if if we're not meeting their expectations. Um, and so again, it's not about that mistakes are never going to happen. They will. Uh, but it's how that we are set up to respond to it. And to your point, Yoni, you know, we we take every experience as a learning opportunity. And so whether, uh, you know, obviously the first thing first is sort of put out any fires that are existing in front of us, but then how do we take a lesson from that experience and then and then apply a system or process uh, mm -hmm. to future experiences so that we never have a repeat? Yeah. And I'm guessing that cascades down from the top of the organization where, um, you know, David Charney, for example, the uh, founder and owner of Capital Homes, right, who's uh, a, a wonderful, brilliant person who's, you know, had so much experience in the world of real estate, I guess. Um, he started Capital Homes, you said, in 1987 um, mm -hmm. and has grown it to, you know, the the really like highest quality kind of uh, home building property, uh, home building company in the in the area, I would say. I mean, I love your product. Um, I guess then touching a little bit about quality and, and standards. My next question is, how do you ensure that each capital home project reflects the high quality standards uh, your clients need and want? And you mentioned that, you know, 200 people, 200 hands, right, are touching the project. Uh, as a home buyer, not necessarily seeing all of this, you're really communicating with a few people, right? One or two people, um, potentially three. You're, you're, you know, giving them information about what you want in a home, what you need in a home. Um, you know, how do you guys take all of this data, right, and make sure that the client receives that highest quality standard, highest quality uh, product? Sure, sure. Well, so, you know, one thing we talk a lot about is that, um, you know, with the pandemic of the last several years and, you know, and, and sort of the supply chain shock that that um, caused and, and just the general, um, ebbing up of price points across, you know, the entire country. Um, you know, one thing we talk a lot about is just that uh, we feel the customer expectations have risen almost, you know, in lockstep with pricing, right? So mm -hmm. naturally, you know, if you if you uh, go to a sandwich shop and you pay eight bucks for a sandwich, you're going to expect different things if you pay 20 bucks for a sandwich, right? There's just sort of an expectation that the price point goes up, that the quality and the, and the uh, finishes, everything's got to go up as well. <clears throat> and so, you know, the last several years, um, our price points have absolutely gone up, uh, driven in large part by our costs going up. Um, and so that was a sort of the natural thing of, of, of flow of things. When when interest rates were in the twos and threes and fours, folks didn't seem to mind as much because they're going to leverage a lot of that purchase and not think too much about uh, the the final price point. 
Um, but as interest rates are you know going into the eights and now hopefully sevens or sixes again, um, that folks uh, are saying, hey, you know, uh, I want to really make sure that, that if uh, I'm going to pay this uh, higher dollar amount than a couple of years ago, that that uh, that I'm getting everything that I expect from that. And so it's it's a little bit of a dance there, and it's a little bit of a of a tension because you know one thing that we try to do is deliver a very high quality product for an affordable price. And affordable, of course, means something different for everyone. So it's not it's not a catch all term. Um, but you know we are not going to be you know your million dollar home. Uh, with all the all the bells and whistles that I might come to, but we are in the mid two hundreds up to five hundred thousand dollar homes, depending on the neighborhood. Um, and so, you know, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home is still two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's, that's that's a lot of money, and expectations are appropriately set alongside it. And so, to your question, you know, how do we ensure that we're delivering that quality and that we're delivering um, and meeting those expectations? You know, we are fortunate to have been in business, you know, for almost forty years. Uh, which means that we have long-standing relationships with these really great vendors here in Tulsa. You know, so we have an excellent, you know, countertops, uh, tile, uh, lumber supplier. I mean, you name it. A lot of our the the the, the pieces we call them sticks and bricks that go into mm-hmm. each of our homes. We have vetted uh, these these uh, suppliers and, and subcontractors over decades, and so we were fortunate to have maintained these great relationships. You mentioned, you know, our our owner and chairman David Charney. You know, starting back with him when he was, you know, in the trenches, so to speak, of this business and getting these relationships started. Um, so much of it does cascade from him and his mentality about treating folks with respect and how everything's a partnership. Um, you know, we're very intentional that we call our subcontractors trade partners because we do view them as partners. They they are, yeah, we're paying them to do a job, but they are helping provide the service and the, and the product to our customers. So we're very much in it arm in arm. And so having those relationships, having built that trust between our company and theirs, um, you know, is, is the foundation, but it doesn't stop there. You know, then of course we have to have a lot of uh, quality control from our superintendents, having a, a thorough schedule and having a good software system supporting that, so that you know, when when our customers make their selections and we send out a purchase order, you know, that there are checks and balances to make sure that that's going out in a timely fashion, that that's you know, getting what we ordered, uh, that there is a, a quality control once it gets to our job sites, that everything is correctly delivered and in good shape. Um, and so there's a ton of steps along the way that we've built in uh, to ensure that everything that we promised, we we're actually able to deliver upon. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, are we going to meet everyone's expectation 100% of the time? That's an easy no, that we're not going to do that. Um, but we are, we're trying to build the business in a way that we can hit that ball out of the park, you know, 90 plus percent of the time, 95% of the time. Um, and then for those opportunities that we have where we don't quite make it, there's probably a lesson in there that we can learn and, and apply for the next time. So. Uh, we just try our best to have a have a good system in place and to be intelligent with uh, the selections that we offer, um, so that we can find that right balance of price and quality, uh, so that things are again affordable for folks uh, where where they're at, where their budget's at, um, but mm-hmm. also that we feel great about the product we're delivering and we stand behind it. Yeah, and I, I experienced that firsthand when I bought this house and I came through it for the very first time. And uh, a little kind of tidbit or a little uh, anecdotal story uh, for that, for what you just mentioned was when I walked into the garage and I saw an electrical hot water heater and then I walked outside and I saw the flute coming out of the, um, coming out of the uh, roof. And I, I turned to, I believe the superintendent, it's uh, Kanan. Right. Mm-hmm. And I yep. said, why, why would we need that if we have an electrical hot water heater? And he immediately said, you know, you're right. That shouldn't be there. And within, I think, 20 minutes, the plumber was back at the house fixing everything. They took it out. They put, you know, um, they put a new board in there. They covered the roof up with shingles. And um, that was a really great experience. Uh, you mentioned supply chains. And, you know, I, I, want to ask what trends are you observing in the housing market and supply chains um, in general? And how is Capital Homes uh, responding to these uh, changing trends? Sure. So, you know, as I mentioned, things have definitely smoothed out significantly from from the volatility of the, of the heart of the pandemic. You know, the, the late 2020s, all of 21 into 22 um, were very volatile. And we had to uh, we had to react pretty quickly in a lot of cases when sometimes our costs uh, were spiking 10% month over month. I mean, I'm talking, everyone, the, the buzzword back then was lumber. 
Um, everyone was just sort of uh, clamoring about how expensive lumber was getting so quickly. Um, so that's a that's sort of a as an obvious one. But there's there's a lot of nitty gritty, a lot of smaller parts of the home um, that we're also experiencing that. So you talk about uh, appliances, you talk about windows, you talk about concrete. Um, you know, we were seeing uh, a lot of volatility in those costs uh, for for our team. Um, and then a lot of that has smoothed out. But, I, but in terms of 24, as we're sitting here on January 5th, you know, we, we did get notice from a lot of our vendors that, hey, come uh, January 1st, they're going to pass on a lot of their increased costs. Um, so I can I can speak to you know concrete just went up 10 percent um, in this month. Uh, you know the insulation has gone up recently. There's there's things you know lumber is starting to creep back up, but it's not not anywhere near the peaks that it experienced uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so we do we do observe that you know even though a lot of folks are feeling hey we're sort of past the craziness of the pandemic, um, costs have not gone back to pre-pandemic levels. There's still a high demand for these products. Um, nationally, and so that's going to keep prices elevated. Um, so we're we're expecting that we're, we we don't expect prices to come down uh, too much this year. Um, and again, you know, when I think about anything that has gone down, it feels temporary in nature. Maybe month over month, we get a little bit of relief, um, but it doesn't last too long. So mm-hmm. that's one thing that I'm cognizant of, and I'm I'm trying to think through uh, ahead of this year, but even beyond, is that if costs stay elevated, if interest rates stay elevated. Uh, if there is less relief from the secondary market um, for you know existing home sales coming into the market, if, if that's not there, um, then you know new home inventory is sort of the, the relief valve to get us up to our sort of um, equilibrium of supply uh, for for housing. Um, you know that's going to create that's going that's going to keep prices high. You know if there's if there's just high demand for new home construction, there's going to be high demand for the products that go into those homes. Um, which is going to then translate to say staying higher prices, and I say higher, I mean just relatively to the last couple of years. Um, but but I also I also know that you know the market um, once once the market recognizes that these are the prices that are that are going to stay, then then they adjust. You know, folks folks are still moving cities, folks are still growing their families, folks are still having life events uh, that cause them the need to to find new housing, and so there's going to be a, a, a certain level of transactions. Um, and, and movement, regardless of interest rates, regardless of price points, um, but it definitely is a bit depressed uh, given the secondary market is just not moving as much. And I know you guys know this well in, in your business too. So um, it, it is something that, that we're keeping an eye on. But but overall, we're we're pretty optimistic for 24. I think I think we sort of weathered the storm of 23 um, successfully. It was definitely a, a big question mark a year ago what what the year was going to unfold and. Uh, we definitely saw this was if you if you recall, you know, Q4 of 22 saw the the largest increase in interest rates over a short amount of time, and so mm-hmm. Q1 of 23 uh, definitely was feeling that effect as folks were wondering how high were those interest rates going to climb, and a lot of folks were sort of hesitant to jump in because they weren't sure if they were going to uh, get a good rate, um, and so after a rough Q1 of 23, uh, we actually had a great rest of the year. Um, and then, of course, uh, now we feel that momentum going into 24 uh, and, and are feeling, um, you know, cautiously optimistic about, about what's ahead. Yeah, with stabilizing prices, hopefully, and, um, you know, predicting the cost of the materials that go into the home. I bet that's pretty difficult, which, um, you know, then then it's hard to predict if I'm going to build a house, start a project today. Right. What's the true cost of that? What, six months down the road? if month over month we have 10 percent increases in concrete prices right uh well very uh, 100 yeah and, and when this is this is actually one of the advantages of going with the higher volume builder like capital homes is that because of our size and and our purchasing power we're able to get a bit better than market prices on our costs you know some of those inputs like lumber or windows or concrete you know obviously we're going to be a little bit more competitive pricing wise um than a custom builder who does five homes a year mm-hmm. versus you know us doing 150. And so, yeah, we were fortunate, and, and our, our our customers hopefully they can experience that because you have uh, that that buying power that they can ride along with us. Um, but then, just something you know to note is that you know when we when we offer a price on a new home build, even if our builds take six months, which is our our average right now, um, we don't change that price. You know, so when 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 you walk in a contract, that's the price we're going to honor, and we are using our data and our software. 
um, to ensure that our budgets are as accurate as possible throughout the life of that bill. And you know, the the just to share with your listeners, a, a large majority of the costs <clears throat> for a new home. <clears throat> number one, the biggest one is going to be the underlying land. That's that's, a, that's mm-hmm. the biggest price, uh, biggest cost of the home. Um, but then beyond that, the six and bricks, a lot of that happens early in the build. And so, you know, when you drop the lumber pack on the site and start putting that home up, that's a that's a large chunk of your expenses. And so the closer we are to when we agreed to a price with a customer, sort of the better, because then there is that less uh, exposure um, to what we call margin compression or sort of, you know, the, the, that, that um, price erosion. And so um, we do experience it. We sort of we uh, we 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 uh, ink a contract and we say, great, this is a you know healthy margin, and we're we're happy with the sale. And then, as you said, you know, if if a if a PO for an item that's towards the end of the bill uh, build spikes a little bit, you know, we're we're going to eat that, and, and we're not going to go back to the customer and say, hey, sorry, our costs went up. You got to pay a little more. That's that's not right. Um, but we also are anticipating that that could happen. Um, and so we've 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 anticipated that and sort of built in a little bit of buffer just to make sure um, that we're not losing money on homes, uh, but that also mm-hmm. we have that little bit of flexibility. Sure, the business has to be a going concern so that you can continue to build and offer affordable quality homes to you know the masses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and try to fill the uh, strong demand and the sh- housing shortage. Uh, I want to be conscious of our time, so I'll uh, finally I'll ask you, you know, what personal philosophies or values have uh, guided you through your career as a business owner, an entrepreneur, and in general in the home building industry? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, you know, for me, I I I started in hospitality when I was uh, 15 years old, uh, waiting tables and and being a host at my local diner. Um, I've always just I've loved talking to people, working with people, serving others, frankly, um, and that obviously influenced a lot of my career um, before jumping into new home construction. Um, and so, you know, the sort of personal philosophy that I carry with me is just to find ways to be helpful, find ways to serve others, find ways to uh, remove uh, hurdles or barriers for other folks. Um, because, you know, if you are if you are supporting others, then they are uh, better prepared to, to pass that on or pay it forward in a way. So. Um, that's mm-hmm. been a big a big part of what um, I've carried with me throughout my career, and then you know, sort of uh, dovetailing with that, you know, it's a it's an education piece. It's a um, you know, really learning about people, not just sort of how uh, how you would like them to work, but how they work best. You know, really take mm-hmm. the time, invest it with folks to say, you know, what sort of style of work is good for you, what sort of style of communication is good for you, and I, I try my best to meet folks where they are. Um, of course, that, you know, that's sort of it's a little bit of a two way street. Hopefully there's some sort of meet in the middle. But but, you know, I'm I'm a flexible guy. I can I can especially in my role as, as head of operations. You know, I see it as my responsibility um, to make sure that, that the systems and processes, the departments are working smoothly. And if I recognize that somebody needs a little bit of a different uh, approach than the next person, then then I'm flexible and able to to adapt. That. And then I try to pass on that philosophy to others. As I mentioned earlier, sure, we have a lot of internal customers um, that then provide that support to our external customers, and so having that open, that openness, that open mind, and, and frankly, an open heart uh, to have that empathy for other folks um, really does seem to have, have paid off. Um, and so I th- those are sort of the, the sort of the foundation of it. Uh, and then you know, I just hope to be able to have more opportunities to, to, to share that message and to uh, be able to, to to teach along the way if I if I'm able to have those opportunities. Yeah, love that. That's uh, beautiful. Um, we also believe in those values. And, you know, Matt uh, Zulk, uh, I, I brought us a book in the office a few years ago, and it's called The Go-Giver, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've ever read that book. But, a, few, a few times. Uh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a powerful, it's a powerful business uh, idea, I guess, or um, you know, they they call it the five laws of stratospheric success. Um, the more you the, the more you give, the more you get, which we truly believe is um, you know something that happens when when you give. So Noah, thank you so much for being with us here today on the same day podcast. Um, if anyone is looking for a new build, Capital Homes is a wonderful product. Uh, I love my home, and I've been in many of the Capital Homes. Uh, properties that they've built all across Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Owasso, um, Big Spee, 
uh, sold some of the secondary homes that you have brought uh, that you've built, and then they've been brought back onto the market. Uh, anyone looking for homes in the range of around two hundred fifty thousand dollars to five hundred thousand um, dollars, Capital Homes has a very unique and uh, seamless eight-step process to your home buying um, experience, and I highly recommend it. Uh, go to capitalhomes.com, reach out to Cynthia. Uh, her little banner is on the top right, and you can reach her. She's extremely responsive and communicative. And uh, I hope that anyone else that's out there that's listening to this podcast uh, who is a Capital Homes customer or future Capital Homes customer um, enjoys this information and uh, a little sneak peek behind the curtain on uh, how things operate. Uh, thank you so much, Noah. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for the opportunity to, to speak to your listeners, Yoni. Had, had fun. Thanks for listening to the Same Day Podcast. Tune in to a new show each week and be sure to subscribe to get future episodes. 